Hi folks, there's some exciting news for Seastar Smart Telescope users because ZWO just released their latest firmware update called EQ Mode. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what EQ Mode actually is, how to set it up, we're going to perform some tests, and I'm going to tell you more about the pros and cons of using EQ Mode. Let's go. If you're a Seastar owner, you've likely received the update already. If not, just open the app and you should see a firmware update instruction for your Seastar S30 or S50. Once the update is installed, you can click the Seastar telescope photo in the app and you will find EQ mode in advanced features when tapping on mount mode, which gives you the ability to switch from ALT S to EQ mode. So what exactly is EQ mode and how is it different from ALT S mode? Well, simply put, EQ Mode uses an equatorial mount setup, which is a more accurate way of tracking objects in the night sky as compared to the standard LS mode. In EQ Mode, the telescope is aligned with the celestial pole of the Earth, allowing for more precise tracking and reduced field rotation during long exposure astrophotography. In its original LDS mode, your Sea Star telescope moves up and down and from left to right, but it isn't tilted to the celestial pole to account for the Earth's rotation. This affects astrophotography in two key ways. Let me demonstrate this using Stellarium, which is a free virtual planetarium. Here we have Mercarian's chain. This is a stunning collection of galaxies visible in spring. You can see these galaxies in the northern hemisphere rising in the east evening sky and note that when they reach the highest point in the southern sky they begin to rotate and eventually point down towards the western horizon. This creates two problems when tracking objects in LDS mode. First, since LDS mode only tracks movement in up, down and left, right directions, it cannot follow the curved motion of celestial objects precisely. This is why the Seastar app restricts exposures to 10 seconds. Second, as an object moves across the sky from east to south to west, it undergoes rotation, causing certain areas of the sky to drift out of the telescope's field of view over time, a phenomenon known as field rotation. To compensate, you can track in EQ mode after aligning your telescope with the North Celestial Pole if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, or the South Celestial Pole if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. This allows your sea star to track the sky more accurately, following the natural motion of celestial objects. As a result, you can take exposures up to 30 seconds, capturing more light per image and reducing noise, since the camera sensor gathers more light as compared to a shorter 10 second exposure. Now, let me show you how to actually set up your sea star telescope in EQ mode. To get started, you'll need to align the sea star with the celestial pole by putting it in the correct latitude position for your location. For this, you'll need an equatorial wedge or tripod capable of angling the telescope horizontally. I highly recommend using an equatorial wedge like my Skywatcher Sky Adventurer, which is a solid choice that costs less than $100 and it is much sturdier than using a photo tripod setup. Here's how to set it up. First. Level your tripod and point one leg towards the north, at least when you are in the northern hemisphere like me. Second, attach the equatorial wedge to the tripod. If you're in the northern hemisphere, point the wedge towards the south. Yes, this might feel counterintuitive, but trust me. Use the bolts on your equatorial wedge to get it into the correct latitude position for your location. Third, place your sea star on the wedge with the power button facing up and the telescope pointing north. So the wedge must point south, so the sea star is facing north, which is different from the usual polar alignment with the telescope. Fourth, switch to EQ mode in the sea star app and tap the Get Polar Align Deviation button to guide you in pointing the telescope in the right direction. The sea star will show you how far off you are from the celestial pole. Adjust the altitude and azimuth using the bolts on your wedge until the readings turn green, indicating that you are polar aligned. When you're close enough, a green check mark should appear, which tells you you are correctly aligned with the celestial pole. Once aligned, you are ready to use EQ mode and track objects 
much more accurately. Once aligned, I set my exposure to 30 seconds, which you can do under advanced features in the Seastar app. I tested both my Seastar S30 and S50 using the EQ mode over two relatively clear nights. As we are currently in galaxy season, I decided to point my S30 at the Mercarian's chain, which is a remarkable group of galaxies located about 50 to 60 million light years from Earth. I selected the object in the virtual sky atlas and used framing mode to capture all of the galaxies in the chain. After calibration and autofocusing, the Seastar S30 started stacking 30 second exposures and the stars did appear to be round which was a good sign the telescope was tracking the night sky accurately. After tracking the objects for about 2.5 hours, the Seastar S30 had taken about 1.5 hour of usable data, indicating that some frames were dropped during the capturing process. The skies definitely weren't perfect with some high hanging clouds and consider that I was imaging from a light polluted city sky under Bortle 7 conditions. So this isn't the ideal way to photograph galaxies as she should really be under much darker skies. But for an EQMO test I figured I was fine. This is the unedited stacked image and I did notice some elongation in the stars which suggests that the EQ mode wasn't tracking perfectly. Here's a stacked image I processed with the light polluted city sky background dialed back as much as I could and the stars corrected as round using RC Astro's blur exterminator in PixInside. Next, I decided to put my Seastar S50 into EQ mode and I checked the polar alignment deviation and I adjusted the bolts of the telescope wedge until I got a green check mark. Then I started photographing two objects using the maximum 30 second exposures. First, I decided to capture the Leo triplet, which are three interacting spiral galaxies about 35 million light years away in the constellation Leo. I tracked the Leo triplet for about two hours and ended up with one and a half hour of data. Again, my tracking wasn't perfect and I ended up with some elongation in the stars if I look at the unedited stacked image. This indicates that my alignment again wasn't perfect that night. Here's the processed image of the Leo triplet which I was happy with considering the city light pollution and the 250mm focal length. Finally, I also decided to take a look at M51, the famous Whirlpool galaxy about 27 million light years away in the constellation Canes Venatici. It's actually a pair of interacting galaxies with M51A being the larger spiral galaxy and M51B being the smaller companion which are in the process of merging. I took about two hours of data, again resulting in about one and a half hour of stacked images. Here is the unedited stacked image of the Whirlpool Galaxy, which did show much better round stars. Now, this could be because M51 is much closer to the North Celestial Pole and higher in the night sky as compared to the other two objects, which requires a bit less precision from the smart telescope in terms of tracking. Anyway, here's the edited picture and once again, considering the 250mm focal length and the city skies, I was pretty happy with this result. Let's discuss the advantages but also the potential drawbacks of using this new EQ mode feature starting with the pros. First of all, in EQ mode you can increase your exposure times up to 30 seconds and that leads to a better signal to noise ratio. By capturing light over a longer period, you gather more signal or more light from that object while reducing the impact of noise in your photos. Field rotation is also much less of an issue with EQ mode since the telescope tracks the night sky more precisely. However, the Seastars software algorithms already help reduce field rotation also when using the telescope in LDS mode. Since you are working with longer exposures, you won't need as many individual light frames. This saves storage space on your Seastar's internal 64GB storage card and it means quicker stacking times if you want to use the individual frames to stack the images yourself. Let's also discuss the potential drawbacks here. Setting up in EQ mode does require more effort and investment. 
you need to get an extra equatorial wedge and go through the polar alignment process each time, which can be time consuming. While EQ mode does improve tracking, there are still some inaccuracies. You may still experience a small drift resulting in elongated stars like I just showed you. For super accurate long exposure astrophotography, you would need a guide scope and a guide camera, which I already discussed in other videos and on my website. During my tests, I did experience frame dropping due to tracking inaccuracies, especially when faced with challenging sky conditions. This is not a drawback per se, but something to be mindful of as it can affect your total integration time. If you are a casual stargazer and not focused on astrophotography per se, EQ mode may not be necessary. It adds complexity and LS mode is still great for general use and quicker observations. So is EQ mode worth it? Well, if you're serious about astrophotography and want better tracking for longer exposures, then absolutely. I'd recommend giving it a try. EQ mode offers reduced field rotation and better light gathering, making it a fantastic feature to capture more detailed deep sky images with your C-Star Smart Telescope. However, if you're more into casual stargazing or don't want the extra set of time, LDS mode will still provide good results with far less hassle. It's also important to keep in mind that these budget smart telescopes like the Seastar S30, S50 and also the Dwarf 3 are still entry level options. Speaking of the Dwarf 3, one of Seastar's biggest competitors in this price range, it is offering up to 2 minute exposure time, so we will probably see similar upgrades to longer exposure times for Seastar telescopes in the future. I've just finished the comparison video between the Dwarf 3 and the Seastar S30 and S50, so be sure to check that out on my channel. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like, share or subscribe as it really helps me to grow the channel and create more content about astrophotography. Clear skies.